Living room conversation. If you're live in a room, isn't it a living room? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Living Room Conversations. I'm Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus. And together, we are the minimalists. And we are answering your questions. You can ask them in the comments below. This question is from Fernando. Fernando asks, what questions should I ask myself in order to buy, keep, or get rid of an item? Mm. So on our website, Ryan, we have something called the five questions to ask before buying. Mm -hmm. They're certainly applicable to buying things, but they're often applicable. Some of these questions are to holding on or let going, letting go of an item as well. And uh, you can find that at theminimalists.com slash before, but also these five questions, there is a, a free wallpaper that you can download as well. So if you want a reminder right there on your phone or your computer before you're, 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 you know, you're standing at the checkout line at your favorite department store and you're like, I'm gonna make this impulse purchase, well, these five questions are gonna be right there on your phone to remind you. So you can find that on our website as well. All right, so Ryan, uh, first question you should ask yourself before buying something is what? Well, I think probably the most important question is, is can you afford it? And Now, what does that mean? Because we, we, yeah. we often think like, of course I can afford it. I've got my credit card right here in my wallet. Well, yeah, right. It's interesting. You got the credit card and then also you're like, oh, I can afford that payment. Oh, yeah. So, you know, first and foremost, when it comes to the monetary cost, if you have to go into debt, if you have to borrow money to purchase something, uh -huh. you can't really afford it. But I get paid next Friday. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I used to always do too, man. <laughs> I mean, but I'd get, you know, I'd get a $8,000 commission check and it was already spent because mm -hmm. I had spent it the month before. You so, spent it in your head at yeah. first and, and, then, and then all of a sudden, when you had access to a credit card or access to some sort of financing option, mm -hmm. you know, I was at a, I was at a uh, a furniture store not that long ago and I walked in and all the little furniture like there was a coffee table it was like two hundred dollars and it was like sixty months zero percent interest and for I'm a two hundred dollar like, coffee table right wow. and I'm, I'm like well if you have to if you have to finance the thing then you, you probably can't afford it. You, yeah, you can't afford it. Yeah, yeah. But, but then there's also other costs, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the second question is like, what's the true cost or the actual cost mm -hmm. of the thing? So we go to buy a thing, and we rarely think about. Well, we see the price tag, and you're like, oh, that's two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But then we don't think about like what's the environmental cost or what's the cost of storing the thing or cleaning the thing or replacing the thing or refueling the thing, putting batteries in the thing. And just taking care of the thing, worrying about the thing, securing the thing. Maybe I have to put the thing in a safety deposit box. All this is stressing me out just thinking about it. Yeah. And that's a cost in and of itself. The psychological cost of a thing mm. is part of it. Maybe it's not reflected in the price tag, but the cost goes way beyond the price tag. So you have to ask yourself if you're holding on to something or if mm -hmm. you want to buy something. What is this costing me? Mm. And there are a lot of things in your house, they might not be costing you money, although they, they might be as well. They're taking up energy or space or whatever, but they're taking up all of these other uh, soft costs, these costs that are much harder to quantify. Yeah, you know, it makes me think of, uh, I was holding on to uh, this prom gift that they gave us my junior, junior uh, year in high school. It was, a wine glass mm -hmm. and like I think it lasted maybe a year or so and it broke and I remember when I found it broken I had this like oh no how am I gonna remember my junior prom mm. and then I thought to myself I'm like why do I want to remember my junior prom and that 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 uh, <laughs> just that perspective it helped me to kind of let go of the anxiety I was feeling right but speaking to the mental cost when we hold on to things, I mean, it, it does weigh a lot on us. Uh -huh. And really, I mean, well, that kind of brings me to the, the third question we ask ourselves is, does this thing add value to my life? Uh, right. Does it serve a purpose or does it bring me joy? And when I was looking at that wine glass, there was way more angst involved with holding on to that wine glass, worrying about it. Now it's broken. Am I going to, I mean, I literally considered holding on to pieces of it. <laughs> <laughs> Some ancient artifact of fossil. Right. Right, uh, but, but it brought me more angst than joy. And, right. And uh, you know, I think that that's a really important question, whether we're buying something 
or whether we are letting something go, you've got to ask, like, does this thing serve a purpose or does it bring me joy? And that's perfect when you have a bunch of things in your house. You can pick up an item and you can be honest with yourself. Does this serve a purpose or does it bring me joy? And if not, I give myself permission to let go. Yeah. Now, the, the next question that we need to a ask ourselves uh, has to do with, um, oh, oh, the fourth question is, um, not can I afford it, but, oh, what's the alternative? Yeah. And sometimes when we want to bring something into our life, it's not just the alternative for the thing, although sometimes that's true as well. We go out and buy another pair of jeans, but I have seven pairs of jeans. Well, I already have the alternatives to that thing. Maybe I don't even need that at all. Yeah. But also, what's the alternative use of this money? Mm. And you, think, you want to think about that. Like if you're going to spend $100 on an item, well, that $100, is this the absolute best use of this money? Mm. And if not, then shouldn't I spend that $100 in a better way? Maybe if I have debt, then of course I should spend that money on paying off the debt. But also when you're holding on to something, those things have some sort of value usually. And, and you can hop on Craigslist or eBay or a local consignment shop, mm. and you can sell a lot of the things in your house. You give yourself a deadline like 30 days is what I typically do. And then you can use that money, it's just free money sitting around your house, you're, you're not using it anyway because it's not adding value to your life. If you let go of that thing, you can use that money for something better. There's a much better alternative for that money. Which brings us to the final question. Yes, and the final question is, oh man, I'm blanking here for a second. Well, it has to do with the 30-30 rule, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, so. Can I wait a little while? Right, so th th that's really the question when it comes to whether you're holding on to something or whether you're bringing something new in your life, is can you go without it? Right. And chances are, you probably can go without it. And I love the 30-30 rule because it gives you permission to uh, consider that, uh, I think, a little deeper than just asking that surface question. You can, you know, if it costs $30 or more, mm -hmm. you give yourself permission to wait 30 hours and see how you feel after 30 hours of waiting. Yeah, we also call that the, the wait for it rule. And we have, we actually have 16 rules. Ryan and I don't believe there is an actual minimalist rule book because minimalism looks different for everyone. But just for fun, we created 16 rules for living with less. It's called the minimalist rule book. It's a free ebook that you can download on our website over on our resources page at theminimalists.com slash resources. It's free. There are 16 different rules in there, including the 30-30 rule. We have the 90-90 rule, the 20-20 rule, and a bunch of other rules for you yeah. as well. I think they'll help you with the, the whole decluttering and letting go journey. Yeah, and the rules, they're there to help you set boundaries. Because right. ultimately, that's what minimalism has done for Josh and I. It's helped us to set very clear boundaries with our lives, whether it comes to our physical possessions, or our relationships, or whatever it may be. It helps us be deliberate with our resources. So maybe the 30-30 rule is crazy for you. Maybe you make it a 10-10 rule. If it's cost more than $10, you wait 10 hours. I, whatever it is, these are just uh, suggestions. It's an outline. Feel free to like take some of our ingredients, but also feel free to switch them up a little bit. Yes, indeed. Thank you for joining us for Living Room Conversations. If you want more of these conversations, leave your question below, and also, we're getting ready to go on tour again. We're taking the Minimalist Podcast live to a city near you. You can find the closest city at theminimalists.com slash tour. We'll see you soon. See you next time. The Minimalists.